is about the, the song, the dance, and the music of Jewish religious practice. What we have to do is when we look at the picture on the screen, we can see that what we see is a, a, a picture that's taken from deep down in the earth from 20, 30, 40, 50,000 years ago. Because Jewish religious practice has its roots evolutionarily in things that started way back in Africa, split out through the Levant, Middle East, as we call it today, into Europe, Asia, into the North America. But we're, we're evolutionary biological beings given to biological pressures. We have a lot of things going on that we have to remember that we are biological. And so if we understand what religion can be, it can be let's divide into cults, let's divide into sects, and attack one another. Perhaps that's what we want, and we can see that Jean Jacques Rousseau may have been wrong, that man in his, in, his, in his innate state may not have been so peaceful, because we see there that they were people who were actually killed long ago in religion. But in a sense, what Jonathan Haidt says, religions work to suppress our inner chimp, that very competitive being, and bring out our inner bee, that very cooperative being. Are we all that? Is that all that's it's about? Perhaps not, perhaps yes. But when we dance, when we hear music, when we touch, when we're with rhythm, when we're singing and dancing and really in the spirit of religion, then evolutionarily, and I contend even today, in Jewish religious practice, we're doing some very specific things to our neurological system. So first we're talking about serotonin, the serotonin system, which helps us with well-being, happiness, mood regulation, appetite regulation, and sleep. We have a lot of serotonin going, we eat a little bit, sleep a little bit, and we feel really good. And when we feel really good, we're willing to do just about anything that somebody's willing to ask us to do. And then we can add some dopamine, because when we touch and we dance and we bleed, we have dopamine tracks, and this really gives us a sense of well-being as well, and pleasure, when you're doped out, you feel good, at least that's what they tell me. And then it goes on and we can feel that we have higher control of our motor function when our dopamine tracks are going. And finally, the, the hormone called oxytocin, which talks about trust and love and gener generosity, motherhood, <coughs> achva, which we call brotherhood, empathy, and an influence of social emotions to, be us, to have us be together. There's never been a, a mialedet, someone who gives birth to somebody uh, who doesn't love the babies. But also we have these things called mirror neurons, which help us to be in coordinated activity with one another. When I do something, if I had a lemon in my hand right now, and I bit in it, I would ask you to raise your hand if you didn't feel that, that sensation in your cheeks. That's what the mirror neurons do, and I didn't even have a lemon here. And if we wonder, and you don't think that that's what's going on here, then come to me later and I'll explain to you why exactly what's going on deep down in the world 20,000 years ago is the same thing that goes on at this wedding, however many months or years ago that might have been, and however many months and years that will continue to go on. We also have to talk about these evolutionary pressures. One of the things we talk about, Amos Zahavi talks about the costly signals of religion, why we invest things, the reciprocal altruism by, by Robert Shivers, why we're willing to do things for each other. And finally, Leon Festinger talks about cognitive dissonance when we convince ourselves that what we're doing is really good. So what are these, what are these costly signals of evolution? The, the reindeer and, 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 and the peacock all have invest a lot to be who they are. When we buy a lulav, when we eat shmor matzah, when we buy tefillin, we're signaling to others that we are really important and we're really Jewish and we're good and it's good to be Jews with us. And then sometimes when we play the role of chazan or darshan, we're also being reciprocal altruism because the person who davens too much if there's no chazan in the shul, well, he's stealing all the, he's stealing all the honor. And the person who, who gives the drasha too much, that's also not good. And cognitive dissonance, what, what Leon Festinger says is that eventually if a person is is required to do things that he doesn't necessarily believe that he or she should be doing, eventually the opinions come back in somebody's mind. As we say in Hebrew, that we, we do what we think we ought to be doing. So Daniel Dennett, one of the new, new atheist philosophers, says that religion is a natural social phenomenon in order to be stubborn, studied by biologists, philosophers, psychologists. And it is a human, it is a human that's composed of events and, organ, and, and, and things that deal with, with, society, with, with, with nature. And Rav Cook ultimately says in, in, his, in his book that came out just recently that we should look at evolution. And in fact, any time we ignore the science of the time, and his time was the, the late 1900s, any time we ignore the science of the time, the true Tamidei Chachamim end up not being like the rabbis of the Talmud, but rather what we do, what we need to do is we need to really 
be as our forebears were and learn what evolution, what science, what biology, what psychology has to teach us in order to understand what Jewish religious practice, any religious practice, but Jewish religious practice is all about. So I'll sum up again. Religions work to suppress our inner chimp, at least within the in-group, and to bring out our inner bee, again within the, within the in-group, so that ultimately we can be seen as perhaps competitors, but hopefully, more likely, we can be seen as cooperators. Thank you.